Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and today I'll be discussing nano-Darwinism, which is a cut-down version of Darwin's theory with a smaller number of axioms. There have been a number of approaches to generalizing Darwinism so that it more obviously applies to other adaptive systems, such as human culture. Here, I'll discuss a novel approach to generalizing Darwinism called nano-Darwinism. Nano-Darwinism is Darwinism with a smaller number of axioms, so conventionally, Darwinian evolution requires copying with variation. Nano-Darwinism simply drops the copying requirement. There are many systems consisting of elements that come into existence without copying being involved. The resulting elements are still subject to natural selection. So to give some examples, this happens with raindrops, snowflakes, islands, mountains, streams, stars, planets, atoms, flames and crystals, as well as with many other natural systems. Although there's no possibility for cumulative adaptation, such systems still exhibit Darwinian dynamics to some extent because of the influence of selection. The features that we see are the result of natural selection. Instead of survival of the fittest, nano-Darwinism exhibits survival of the most stable, and this idea has long been appreciated. So, for example, here is Richard Dawkins writing on page 12 of The Selfish Gene. Darwin's survival of the fittest is really a specific case of a more general law of survival of the stable. The universe is populated by stable things. Nano-Darwinism is that more general law. It's dominated by forces which I've characterised as being natural production and natural elimination, which correspond to new elements coming into existence and then subsequently going out of existence. So, as a simple example, snowflakes come into existence as microscopic water droplets condense inside clouds, and they go out of existence when the snowflakes melt on the ground. The snowflakes we see are the result of the balance between these two forces. Dawkins classified the properties of the elements in traditional Darwinism with concepts of fecundity, fidelity and longevity. Nano-Darwinism drops the fidelity category. That leaves longevity, and though the word fecundity no longer seems applicable, we can rechristen the concept to be productivity. The frequencies of the elements involved can be analysed using frequency analysis, so for example, if the elimination rate of the elements exceeds their production rate, then the number of elements will dwindle rapidly. Nano-Darwinism covers a very large number of natural processes, and it includes Darwinism as a special case in which production takes place via a copying process. Nano-Darwinism is an important and very basic scientific concept. I hope that understanding it enriches your appreciation of the world. Um, enjoy!